What up, YouTube? Team Movies here with Dr. Sleep Hand Dears this week. Since it stars Ewan McGregor as a grown up Danny Torrance, I decided to go ahead and do my top 10 favorite Ewan McGregor movies. He's an awesome actor. I mean, he, of course, got his major start, like, in, I believe, like, uh, the 90s and all And since then, he's been in, like, some interesting uh, films over the years. I mean, he's also been in some not so good stuff either, but hey, every actor don't have um, a good day in the office now. But, uh, anyway, with that being said, here's my 10 favorite Ewan McGregor movies. Alright. Coming in at number 10, it is the remake of Beauty and the Beast. Now, of course, here Ewan McGregor played, uh, played the uh, candlestick, uh, Luminaire, who, of course, uh, sang the iconic song, uh, Be Our Guest. Uh, you had, uh, Sir Ian McKellen as the, uh, voice of the, um, clock, uh, Cogsworth. Ewan McGregor as Luminaire was really cool casting. I mean, you know, I love how, uh, like, they really, like, Ewan really, um, did a great job with using the, uh, French accent. I mean, come on, if a, uh, famed New Yorker like Jerry Orbach could, uh, do a great job at pulling off a, uh, French accent, then Ewan McGregor definitely had that part in the bag. And I... Like, Ewan McGregor, who knew that, like, that guy could sing really well. And, I mean, I, of course, knew he could sing before. But, uh, man, him singing that Be Our Guest was one of the highlights of that movie. Like, his aunt, like, Luminaire and, uh, his aunt Katrina chemistry with Cosworth and even Emma, uh, Watson's Bell was pretty good. I mean, yeah, Beauty and the Beast, you know, of course, uh, directed by, um, uh, by, uh, Bill Condon, I mean, really terrific movie, if you guys have ever seen, uh, Beauty and the Beast, it's really great, or I should say the remake, alright, uh, coming in at number nine, it is the film Down With Love, now, this movie is directed by, uh, Ant-Man director Pay and Reid, and in it, it stars, uh, you know, it takes place in 1962, and it's about this, uh, feminist named uh, Barbara Novak, played by uh, Renee Zellinger, who ends up pe uh, paying a uh, best-selling book that details the uh, drawbacks of love. And so you got this uh, catcher block, this guy named uh, Catcher Block, uh, you know, played by uh, McGregor, who decides to like expose uh, Barbara by uh, as a fraud by making her fall in love her. But then, you know, he ended up like, but then there's still um relate like um romance at uh, Aaron Wines down the road. It's a really nice uh, rom com. I mean, you got uh, David Hyde Pierce was in this. Uh, now Renee and uh, Yuma have have actually worked together before. Like they also did that um, that uh, Miss Potter movie, which is actually not in my list because I felt like that was more of Renee Zellweger film, definitely a McGregor film. But I guess you could say this is also a uh, more of a Zellweger film too. But but uh yeah. Uh, Down with Love is a really nice, charming, uh, romantic comedy, uh, you know, McGregor and, uh, yeah. Zellweger both had great, uh, romantic chemistry with one another. I mean, it was supposed, like, I guess you say it was like, um, like, it was like, um, a recent generation of, uh, like, it was kind of like a love letter to, uh, those films with, uh, Rock Hudson and, uh, Dorsey. That's what it was also similar to as well. Really good film. You guys ever seen Down with Love? Give that one a shot. Coming in at number eight, it is the film Beginners. Now, the film is uh, directed by Mike Mills, who also gave us 20th Century Woman. And, and uh, uh, you. Anyway, uh, in the film, you've got uh, Christopher Plummer, who uh, plays like this uh, old guy uh, named. Uh, you know, name, uh, uh, how, uh, played by, uh, Plummer, and, uh, McGregor actually plays, uh, you know, plays, uh, Hal's, um, he, of course, plays, uh, Hal's, uh, son, and he has to find out that, um, he pretty much finds out that his, uh, dad, you know, uh, is also, um, uh, gay, so, uh, yeah, and this film is actually, I guess you could say, um, basically, pretty much, um, Anyway, the film uh, is kind of like uh, based on uh, Mike's, uh, you know, actual uh, you know, relationship with like his dad and stuff. And Beginners is a really nice little film. I mean, Christopher Plummer won his uh, first ever Oscar for this. You know, 
And of course, uh, Plummer, you know, gave a really uh, decent performance here. Uh, like his, uh, you know, of course, uh, the um, on-screen uh, daddy, like uh, that answer relationship between the two was pretty great. If you guys have never really seen Beginners, it's a really decent flick. Alright, coming in at number 7, it is the film The Impossible. Now, the film is directed by uh, J.A. Benona, who also gave us a Jurassic, um, the Jurassic World sequel, I should say. And this is, of course, about the, uh, about the 2004 Southeast uh, Asia um, tsunami that ends up pretty much uh, striking the uh, uh, hotel and uh, ends up pretty much, uh, and also uh, separates a, a family um, apart. And, uh, and you got uh, Naomi Watts, who plays um, McGregor's uh, wife at McGregor. Was also great in this. Uh, you even had a very young Tom Holland was in this. Uh, it's a really great film. I mean, The Impossible is really hard to watch. I mean, I probably only seen this movie just once, and that's kind of it. It's not an easy watch. And great, like McGregor and Watts, you know, both had great performances uh, together. Yeah, The Impossible is crazy that it's been, like this really happened in real life. But uh, yeah, it's a really decent uh, film. I mean. Uh, Despite how hard, like, despite being a, a hard uh, film to watch, it's still a pretty decent one. And if you guys haven't really seen The Impossible, give it a go. You'll, I think you'll like it. Alright, coming in at number six. It is, of course, uh, Star the uh, Star Wars prequels. I know this is going to be unpopular to say, but I got to kick out the Star Wars prequels. I mean... Come on, you got McGregor as a legendary Jedi Master Obi Wan Kenobi, who of course ended up training uh, Anakin Skywalker, uh, who served that and uh, of course uh, served as the uh, general um, in the Republic Army and all. Now, of course, one actor who we all know played uh, Obi Wan was uh, Alex Guinness. Now, Alex was great as uh, Obi Wan, but McGregor as a uh, as Obi Wan was also a uh, great. I mean. McGregor's, like, a chemistry with Anakin Skywalker is amazing. And, like, his lifesaver, uh... I quite liked, uh, you, uh, you and, like, life's, uh, lifesaver, uh, scenes. They're, they're pretty cool to watch. Yeah, I mean, I'm also really happy that, uh, Ewan is coming back as Obi-Wan for, uh, the, uh, for that Disney Plus show. So that's pretty cool that he's, you know, definitely coming back to play Obi-Wan. But, uh, yeah, of course, um, Yoon has played Obi-Wan loads of times, whether it's, uh, Found Menace, uh, Attack of the Clones, and, um, Revenge of the Sith. I believe he also voiced the character in a couple of, uh, video games as well. But, uh, yeah, him as live-action Obi-Wan is great. Now, like, even people who don't like the Star Wars prequels can't, can't really deny of how, how much of a great Obi-Wan that guy is. Alright. Come... Coming in at number five, it is Big Fish. Now McGregor here, of course, uh, plays the lead role of Tortell um, Tower Harp, uh, um, Edward Bloom. With uh, you also got um, legendary actor Albert uh, Finney, and it's where like a uh, older version of a uh, of Albert um, played by Finney, who is like uh, pretty much um, who is also uh, dying, tells like the uh, fantastic stories about his uh, like to his son. And uh, McGregor, of course, plays the uh, younger um, Edward in these tales. And, of course, uh, it's where, like, it includes uh, interacting with uh, anything from giants, witches, and uh, loads of twins and stuff. And it's directed by, um, it is directed by Tim Byrne and stars a lot and features uh, Helen Bon Connor, uh, Danny DeVito, Marianne Cotillard. Uh, you have a young, a very young Miles Cyrus is in this, uh, Steve Buscemi. It's a really nice fantasy flick. Uh, McGregor was terrific here. I mean, him as, like, a younger version of Aberfinney was pretty cool. I'm like, he literally actually do look like a young Aberfinney, too. So, I, I thought that was pretty cool to watch. Uh, yeah, it's a really nice fantasy drama. A very a different, um, like, a very different style to burn film. Like, if you guys never seen Big Fish, give it a go. I mean, come on, you got Danny DeVille as, like, a, uh, you know, uh, who works at Circus here. One more key ask for there. All right. Coming in at number four, it is Black Hawk Down, directed by Ridley Scott, uh, starring McGregor as uh, the specialist named John Grimsey uh, Grind, 
who's of course this uh, desk clerk at a uh, in a Somalia who has like never really uh, pretty much uh, been on like a uh, mission before, and so like the mission of course becomes like a uh, deadly bout in uh, of Mac. Um, Mega Dishu, which of course ended up uh, resulting in like numerous uh, casualties among uh, U.S. forces in their like a fight with uh, Somali um, forces. Uh, Lord, to like this uh, strongman named Muhammad uh, Faria, uh, I did, and I mean McGregor of course gave a really strong performance here, like great action he did. Uh, you also had a few other people like. Uh, Josh Harnett, um, Eric Banna, William uh, Fickner, you also had Tom Sizemore, uh, Ty Burrell, Jason Isaacs, uh, Eon Griffin, uh, years before Game of Thrones, you had uh, Nicola Costa-Rado, really great uh, cast members, great action, uh, really um, very intriguing. I mean, yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, anyway, yeah, Black Hawk Down is really great. I mean, such a cool action film, and Nice walk there. Definitely give this one a shot, you I think you'll probably get a kick out of it. Alright. Coming in at number three. It's actually, like, uh... I guess I should say it's, like, um, one of his uh, rare recent ones. And, uh... My number three favorite McGregor movie goes to Christopher Robin. Now, this week he plays, like, a uh, older version of Danny Torrance. But last year, he played an older version of Wayne the Pooh's owner, Christopher Robin. And, I mean, I I guess you could say Christopher Robin is a bit like a kid version of Dr. Sleep in a way. But uh, Christopher Robin was great. R amazing CGI. Um, like, you got Jim Cummings as Wayne the Pooh. Uh, Brad Garrett was, of course, Eeyore. Uh, you got lots of the um, you know, other uh, classic Wayne the Pooh characters. You even got uh, Haley Atwell, who ended up playing uh, McGregor's wife here, and it's it's really charming, cute. Uh, McGregor gave a really amazing performance as Christopher Robin. I mean, this movie, I think it's kind of un like very underrated. I mean, it got released last year, and people barely talk about it anymore. And but the box office was okay with it. But uh, anyway, yeah, uh, Christopher Robin was really terrific. And McGregor, as the older Chris Robin, was also great to watch as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, coming in at number two, I got Moulin Rouge. Now, this, of course, start, is, of course, a musical uh, starring uh, Nicole Kidman, Ewan McGregor. I mean, now, of course, there's, like, a Broadway show of it now, but uh, the film version of Moulin Rouge, directed by uh, Boz Lerman, what an awesome film. I mean... Great music here, uh, great romantic chemistry between Kidman and McGregor. You know, uh, McGregor actually ended up uh, receiving, like, his uh, first ever Gold Globe nomination um, for the film, and he really had great scene chops here. And, of course, Nicole Kidman, like, she really uh, sang um, her heart out here as well. I mean, yeah, Moulin Rouge is magnificent. If you guys ever seen the film... Give it a go. It's really great. Alright. Now, my favorite Ewan McGregor movie of all time. Now, what's better than Moulin Rouge or anything, or even Star Wars, for that matter? His best work, like, his best performance, I should say, in my opinion, goes to Train Spotting. You know, directed, uh, you know, directed, um... <laughs> By uh, Danny Boyle, a uh, very um, dark comedy about like a group of uh, heroin addict friends in like this uh, Scotch um, city of uh, Edinburgh, and you also got um, and this film actually was I guess you could, you could say it was a film that put uh, McGregor on the uh, map for most people. Uh, you also got um, Kelly McDonald was great in this. Uh, you also got uh, John Lee Miller, uh, Robert uh, Carl, um, Kevin McKidd. Yeah, Trace Potting is, of course, a film about friendship, a film about addiction. Well, yeah, such a really great film. I mean, it's a very dark comedy. It's comedy, period. Like, it has, like, lots of comedic stuff in it. Yeah, Trace Potting is amazing. And the sequel is pretty good, too. Like, shame that the sequel didn't get much love when it got released. Like, it actually got love, just uh, didn't really do great in the box office. And lots of people probably even forgot that the movie even came out. 
But uh, Trace Potting and Trace Potting 2, for that matter, both films are really great. If you guys have ever seen uh, both Trace Potting movies, give them a go. I mean, they're some like they're some of the best Danny Boyle works to shoot. So, yeah, some really good stuff right there. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me do the quick rundown. Uh, 10, Beauty and the Beast. Uh, 9, Down with Love. 8, Beginners. Uh, 7, The Impossible. 6, um, the Star Wars prequels. Uh, 5, Big Fetch. Uh, 4, Black Hawk Down. 3, Christopher Robin. Uh, 2, uh, Moulin Rouge. And 1, Train Spotting. Now, McGregor has been loads of other great stuff over the years. Let me pull this trail list. Uh, I'm actually looking forward to see him play Black Mask in uh, Birds of Prey. That, I'm kind of looking forward to that. I don't care what anyone says. Uh, he was in uh, Michael Bay's not-so-good movie, The Island. Uh, he was in uh, Ron Howard's not-so-good movie, uh, Angels and Demons. Uh, the Ghost Rider, directed by Roman Polanski. Uh, Jack the Giant Slayer he was in. Uh, Robots, I Love You, Phil Morris, with uh, Jim Carrey. Um, he made his directorial debut with a film called American uh, Pastro with uh, Jennifer Connelly, uh, Man Who Stare at Goats, uh, Perfect Sense, Velvet uh, Goldmine, uh, he was in that horrible giant death movie, uh, Mordecai. Uh, Salmon Fishing in the Yemen with uh, Emily Blunt. That was okay. Uh, he was in that not-so-good uh, Nanny McPhee sequel. Uh, he was in that horrible uh, Natalie Portman uh, film, uh, Jane Guy Gun. Uh, he was in that movie Young Adam with uh, Tilda Swin. Uh, he was in that, he was in that movie uh, Haywire. Uh, he's been loads of great stuff. Uh, you know, the aforementioned uh, Miss Potter is really great. Uh, Night Witch. Uh, Night Watch, I'm actually saying. Uh, yeah, McGregor, he's the man, and cannot wait to see Dr. Sleep this week. But uh, let me leave to you guys. What are some of your favorite you and McGregor movies? Drop a comment below. Don't forget to like. Subscribe. Hit that bell for more notifications. This is your C-Movie Sign Off.